This week is National CPR and AED Awareness Week, and we're here with the CPR and Safety Lady to learn more, Gail Gould. Thank you so much for being here with us, Gail. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Okay, there's five skills that everyone really, really needs to know. We're yes. going to start with CPR. Yes. Tell us how important that this is. Sophia, it's so important that we all need it, how to perform CPR. And the reason is the people you're most likely to administer in CPR are family, friends, and loved ones. Around 350,000 people this year will die in the United States from sudden cardiac arrest. And American Heart Association estimates between 100,000 and 200,000 lives could be saved if more people stepped up to the plate. I think the statistic is less than 50% of Americans admit to knowing CPR and they've made it so easy now you don't even have to breathe for the person so all you want to do is the way you'll know so we need CPR <clears throat> is you'll shake and shout try and wake them up and they're not responding to you. even if they're moaning groaning that's not good enough they've got to be able to open their eyes look at you speak to if they can't do that I'm gonna say <clears throat> excuse me Sophia go call 911 to get the AED which we'll talk about in a minute I'm just gonna scan his body for five to ten, ten, ten seconds he's not breathing normally not breathing at all all you're gonna do is place the heel of your bottom hand on the chest in between the two nipples on the sternum and just compress hard and fast until advanced help arrives. It's called hands only CPR. So they've made CPR so much less complicated than it used to be. And that's all you have to do for teenagers. And, and just older. keep going, just right? Keep you, going. you don't keep stop going. until somebody shows up or that's they come exactly back with right. the AED. That's what, exactly now, right. Now choking is another important one. We need to know what to do because these yes. things happen so quickly. Yes. And you know what, Owen, you're more likely to encounter a victim who's choking than you are a victim of cardiac arrest. And so we talked about choking before when I was here last time, but you'll know someone's choking because choking is most silent. Okay. You'll hear very little noise, a weak ineffective cough, high-pitched crowing noises, not making much noise, face turns pale. Then all you want to do for anyone over the age of one is make a fist and you can try this yourself. Place your thumb inside the fist, thumb inside the fist, knuckles pointing straight up, right above the navel, place that thumb right above the navel, place the other hand on top and then inward up at thrust. Almost like you're drawing the Nike swoosh. That's right. Up, upward. In That's the upward. important. In, in and up. And, up. and this is what you do for anyone over the age of one who's choking. And last time I think we had a baby and you said, turn it over. Yes. And really just get going. Exactly and, right. You know, anyone under stop. the age of one, you give them five back slaps and you give them five chest thrusts till the object is expelled. Um, but uh, boy, I, I've talked, literally talked to thousands and thousands of people who successfully done this. I've done it. I did it to my son at HEB about eight or nine years ago. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. The third first aid thing that we all need to know about is how to recognize a heart attack. Heart attack is the number one killer of men and women here in the United States. And so how are you going to know you're having a heart attack? Symptoms of a heart attack are going to be chest pain. What's a chest pain going to feel like? It's going to feel like a heaviness, a burning, a spreading, the center of the chest lasting longer than two minutes. Sometimes people get sweating, nausea. Indigestion and heartburn are very, very common symptoms of a heart attack. If you think you're having a heart attack, sit yourself down and call 911. Do not drive yourself. And don't drive other people to the hospital because you can end up going into cardiac arrest while you're driving while you're them to the hospital. So okay. if you get to the hospital within the first hour of the onset of your symptoms, it's called the golden hour, your chance of surviving with no permanent damage to the heart is 95%. No kidding. So really important to recognize the symptoms and call 911. And ASAP. The fourth basic first aid skill is recognizing life-threatening bleeding and know how to control it. You know, it is 2024. Mm -hmm. And so life-threatening bleeding is the number one preventable cause of death after trauma or injuries. So can I use your arm, Sophia? Yes. So all you want to do if someone has a major bleed, there's blood spurting from the wind, there's more than a half a can of soda worth of blood pulling on the ground, all you want to do is compress and you can use a clean towel you can use a sock a clean t-shirt and we'll just say it's here on your arm i'm just going to wrap your arm and i'm just going to elevate it and i'm going to apply pressure and this is all you want to do you want to continue to apply pressure until advanced help arrives now if this is not cutting it this is not working you can also use a tourniquet okay all school nurses now are carrying tourniquets in the clinic in fact i'm recommending all of my clients have 
tourniquets in their first aid kits. And you know, this is $24 on Amazon. Okay. And, and this would go right over the wound, right two over Two inches top above. Of, two, two inches above, above right. Okay. So you're just gonna wrap this around. I'm not gonna tighten it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want and her you, to pass out now when we're doing the same. You tighten this up, and this is called the windlass. So all you do is you just continue to tighten this until the bleeding stops. And that's okay. the point, is to stop the bleeding. And, and, and schools and, and institutions generally have some of these things around. I mean, I yes. know this is kind of the work we're doing. We've seen these automatic external defibrillators yes. added to sports teams, to gymnasiums, well, and they're churches, required, you name they're it. They're required okay. in schools in Texas. 27 states require ADs to be in schools, and Texas is one of them, and they use them. They absolutely, I feel pretty confident, I know, I'm 99.99% confident that yesterday the Kansas City Chiefs football player who went into cardiac arrest during a team meeting, they gave him CPR and they used an AED. The AED plays a critical role in their okay. survival. And it's easy to use once you very, open it. Very, very It kind of tells you exactly yes. what to do. Want me to turn it on? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we got time. Let's do it. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Oh, wow. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. So you cut the clothes off possibly shave the man's chest, dry them off if they're wet, and you can see there's diagrams. Okay, so I'm just going to place this here. Plug in connector. There's diagrams. See, really, they're very simple to use. Now it's telling me plug in connector. And again, this only goes on people who are unconscious and not breathing. Okay. I mean, I don't think the instructions could be any clearer. Mm -hmm. It's very, very easy. You have, you have the audible sound, Analyzing you have the pictures. And some of them have a video screen. Do not is that right? the patient. It tells you when it's safe to touch the patient, it tells you when it's not safe. It just said, do not touch patient. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of patient. So I'm going to say, I'm clear, you're clear, we're all clear. Shock and then I'm going to press the press shock the button. Shock and their delivered. body will kind of jolt up just like you Pause. see on TV. Is that right? And if is this needed, the begin CPR. If, wow. So then, do we keep? Do you keep going with the defibrillator if it if it doesn't work immediately? Do you go well, back to CPR? You go back you, to CPR. If they if they don't wake up yeah. after the first shock, then you and they're not breathing, you go back to giving them CPR. And what you're doing with CPR, Owen, is you're hopefully keeping their heart, brain, and lungs alive until advanced help arrives. Advanced. Your brain only has about four minutes to go without blood and oxygen. They go, it goes longer than four minutes without blood and oxygen. Brain, there's a pretty good chance the brain tissue will start to die. Should let's say Sophia and I were here and there was someone suffering cardiac arrest. Do I go for a minute and then does she jump in and go for a minute? That's Whatever such a it good takes question. to keep. I'm glad you asked me that. We recommend you switch off every two minutes okay. because you know what? If you don't push hard enough, it will not be effective. Anytime I see CPR done in person, I'm so I'm just sort of shocked at how hard you have to push. You have to push harder than you intuitively think you need to. So it's a very, very hard, very hard. Is it, it, can you push too hard? Most people don't. Most okay. people don't push hard enough. Yeah. In fact, some of the ACLS ambulances here in Houston have machines to do the compressions. When you see it, I mean, it is just, it's so dramatic how hard it's pushing on the chest. Okay. And the final first aid tip are seizures. We all need to know how to manage a seizure. Um, someone starts having a, a, a grandma, with her, they used to be called grandma, now they're called um, different type of seizures. But um, all you want to do for that person is let them have their seizure, get them on the ground if they're in a chair, get them on the ground, get them out of the car and let them have their seizure. Move everything out of the way, move all furniture, all people, all objects, let them have their seizure. Um, don't restrain them, don't put anything in their mouth. Um, okay. People often want to stick like a wallet or a spoon. No, they nothing. don't need any help with their mouth. Once they're done convulsing, roll them on their yeah. side because there's a good chance that they're going to throw up. Okay. And you don't want people laying their back while they're vomiting. Go gold. Safety lady, thank you so much. Thank so you for much having me. This was so it. much fun. Thank, thank you. you so we'll much. see you again soon. We'll be okay. right back after this.